Producers, they need to focus on reducing the feed conversion rate, so they use less feed per pound of gain for, of the hogs, and they can do that by first of all focusing on not wasting any feed, so get the feeders adjusted correctly and make sure the pigs don't waste any feed. They can uh, look at um, at formulating the diets correctly to have the, the, the correct amount of nutrients in the diet but not over formulated so not feed too much of any nutrients and uh, they also need to look at uh, using the most inexpensive feed ingredients uh, that are available and that is uh, often the, it's often the case that we can use ingredients other than corn and soybean meal that are that can help lower feed costs and we have a lot of ingredients in Illinois from the wet milling industry and from the food industry that can be used. So let's take them up individually. Let's start with uh, not wasting feed. A couple of things. Start with the corn grind itself. Yeah, we can uh, grind corn to a small particle size, which is down to 400 microns, and that will increase the digestibility of the energy in the corn. And that means the pig will get more energy out of each pound of corn it eats, and therefore it will eat less corn to gain the same amount of weight. So we can save some corn by grinding it down to approximately 400 microns, 450 microns. Um, I'm going to take on one little tangent uh, because there's so much corn from last fall uh, that was out of shape um, and would have been too high in some toxins. Um, how much of a difference does it make in the feed ration for hogs? If you have high mycotoxin levels, that can make a difference. It depends on which mycotoxins, but if it's aflatoxin, which was a major problem we had last year, uh, diets for pigs, uh, pigs can tolerate up to approximately 100 parts per billion, so they tolerate more than, say, dairy cows, um, and, uh, and, and so we can use a little bit more of that. If we have grain that exceeds 100 parts per billion, 120 parts per billion, then we need to either have less corn in the ration or we need to blend it together with some clean corn so we get the average down in, in the corn. So that's the only way we can handle that. But if you have 200 parts per billion in the corn and you use 50% corn, then you have 100 parts per billion in the diet, right? So it's in the diet, we need a, down to 100 parts per billion. So that's why I said, if you have high aflatoxin in the corn, you need to use less of that corn in the diet. Okay, we'll get to the alternative feed ingredients in a moment. Let's go back to things that the uh, producer can do. We talked about the grind. The feeders are important, you suggest, and having them set properly. Adjusting feeders is a very important thing. If they are not adjusted correctly, if there's too much feed in the feeders, then the pigs will waste that and they'll root it out of the feeder and it will get into the, into the slats uh, and disappear in the, in the pit. And obviously that cannot be utilized. And we have seen research where they've shown f between five and 10% of all the feed that comes, in, comes into the feeder ends up under the slats, so it's not eaten. So adjusting those feeders correctly is very important in terms of feed conversion rates. Now let's talk about the alternatives. In the state of Illinois, let's work with ADM Tate & Lyle in Decatur, Illinois. Uh, there's corn gluten uh, and some other products that are available. Yeah. There are a number of products coming out of the wet milling industry. Uh, corn gluten meal, corn gluten feed, corn germ meal, which is a defatted corn germ, is a very good ingredient. And there are some newer products also, corn extractives and some other things that they mix together. So there are a number of products there that uh, can be used in diets for pigs, but maybe 20%, maybe 25% uh, in, in that area. And, and right now, that is a very good buy, so it will lower feed costs if we include some of those ingredients. We do need to make sure the diets are formulated correctly so we have the correct amount of nutrients in the diets and that's why producers need to work with a nutritionist or their feed company to make sure that they get the diets correctly formulated. They cannot just take out corn and put in corn during meal or, or, or DDGS or something else. They need to have them balanced but if they do that then the pigs will do very well on many of these co-products. DDGS is it simply a substitute for corn or is it sim or a substitute for corn and for bean meal? DDGS is a substitute for both corn and bean meal and on average if you have 100 pounds of DDGS in the diet you take out about 55 percent, uh, 55 pounds of corn and 45 pounds of, of, of bean meal. So you sub substitute both of them and then you add a little bit of, of synthetic lysine to balance the lysine. That's how we, how we do that. 
Is it a good alternative as well? DDDS is a very good alternative. We use 20%, 25, sometimes up to 35% in the diet. So that will be 400 to up to 700 pounds uh, per ton. And that works very well. We have seen very good results with that. And uh, we just need to make sure the diets are balanced on amino acids and, and phosphorus also. Some of the ethanol plants have found that DGGS, DDGS as a co-product works very well, but have also found a market for corn oil or oil coming out of that DDGS or the corn that's being ground for ethanol. Uh, and that changes some of the rations and the way it's used in hog feed. Yeah. Um, there, there is a, a technology now where the ethanol plants, they will skim off the fat from the solubles and that results in DDGS being produced that contain only between 6 and 9 percent fat and not the 10 to 11 percent we have seen in the past for conventional DDDS. However, that fat they take off is relatively poorly digested by the pigs, so it doesn't hurt the energy in the pig, in the DDDS as much as you would expect. And we have, act, we have our research indicates that we, you would not be able to see a difference between whether it's a 6% fat or a 9% fat DDDS. And our research have shown that and other places have shown the same thing. So we are relatively comfortable getting down to 6% fat. If you get down to 2 or 3% fat, there is a difference. But 6, 7, 8%, we're okay. So there are other, there are other small grains that are grown uh, in the state. Um, how can we use them and which small grains are useful? Well, we have, uh, the, the, the most important one is wheat. We do have wheat grown in the southern part of the state particular and also in Missouri, and it is combined early, so that means if you run out of corn in July or August, there may be opportunities to buy wheat, feed grade wheat, and that's a very good uh, deal. You can pretty much substitute corn for wheat, and you actually can take out a little bit of bean meal at the same time because there's more amino acids in wheat compared with corn. So it does help in the formulation. And so if you can buy wheat at the same price or less than corn, it's, it's going to improve uh, profitability. Barley is another good source of energy uh, we can use in the diet. However, we don't grow a lot of barley in, the, in Illinois, so it will have to be trucked in, and so it depends on what the, what the cost will be. Same thing for field peas and oats and stuff like that. If they're available at a competitive cost, we can definitely use it. Very, very good uh, ingredients to use. And we do have quite a bit of information on our website about those those ingredients also.